Hey guys, Jill here from Ask About Tech. I know you have some burning questions that you need answered. So today, I want to talk to you about how to trim your dog's toenails. That is something that I hear a lot. I'm not sure I can do it. I don't want to hurt them. All the questions, black nails, white nails, fuzzy feet, it's all going to be covered today. First, there's going to be a little bit of anatomy, uh, so that will make you feel a lot more comfortable. Secondly, there is a little list to make sure you have everything you need before you start the process. If you feel this is not for you, please hire someone to do it. Either the vet, the groomer, it is not always easy to do the things that need to be done maintenance wise to your pet. So that's why I'm here. Here we have a front foot, pretty standard nails, some pads, do claw sometimes, and the carpal pad. On the hind limb though, there is a little bit different structures. Sometimes they have a dew claw on the back that could be attached or not attached and they're missing the carpal pad. There are quite a few breeds that do have a multiple dew claw in the hind leg. Um, that is, sometimes they're bony attached, sometimes they're not, and sometimes they're really floppy, just kind of depends on the breed. Here's the list of the things that we're going to need. You're going to need a dog, you're going to need some clippers, you're going to need a safe spot to work, and a couple other things. Here is a dog you could choose from. Any of these guys are really great to get their nails trimmed. Um, been doing it a long time. My favorite choice here of all these clippers is the Miller Forge Dog Large Size. I can clip anybody's nails with that, but the other ones are great choices too. I suggest getting some quick stop powder, and these ones here are great choices. They have pain reliever in them and they stop the bleeding, which is a bonus. Other things you could use that are in your house would be white bread flour or plain flour or cornstarch because they stop bleeding as well. Don't forget the high value treats. Just ask your pet how important they are in this place and time. <laughs> Here is a great diagram of the toe and the composition of inside of that toe. Basically where you're gonna cut on the left hand side is that green line. We're gonna try to avoid the nail bone and that little space around it. That space, the little black space, is what people refer to as the quick. On the right hand picture, you're just gonna follow the green lines. Don't get too close to that quick though. Please never feel bad if your pet needs to be muzzled. Safety first, let's keep everyone's fingers intact. And there's no such thing as muzzle shame. Use it if you need it. Muzzling your dog does not hurt them at all. Do they love it? Probably not. We're gonna get started here by trimming up Lacey's nails. She's an older girl, so you have to be very careful of how you manipulate her. Um, she likes to be standing most of the time and she has very long quicks. Um, she didn't get her nails trimmed like she should have as she was a younger gal and so they kind of grew out. So we're just really careful. We go ahead and trim down until I see that white spot. Once you clip it, you'll see what I'm talking about. You don't really want to go much further than that because that's starting to get into the area where you don't want to go any further. Uh, I could have took a little bit more off that one, so we're just going to trim it up a little bit. On the edges, you'll see um, I go back and I trim that edge just like it shows in the picture. Not everyone needs it, but most of them did. Um, she is not being hurt in any way, shape, or form. She is not muzzled either because I've worked with her and worked with her and she doesn't need it. She does not have a front dew claw there because all of her dew claws were removed as a puppy. So that's just something that the breeder did. I'm gonna move her around here a little bit. Like I said, she prefers to be standing. And in the back here, um, she can't really support herself very well. So I have her kind of leaned on my arm there just to give her a little bit more support. And after I kind of get her stable there, she was able to support her own weight. We're gonna do the back ones too. Um, she did really well for these. We did have to take a couple breaks here and uh, I just kind of fast forwarded through that so you didn't have to see all that. But um, as you can see, she lets me kind of move them around. I give her little breaks here and there. Old toes equal arthritis. So if you pick up a foot and you hear a lot of cricking and cracking, that is arthritis and it is probably not super comfortable for the pet. On this foot right here, I'm kind of showing you the area that is chipped away and kind of broken up there. And that is just her normal everyday anatomy. This is who she is. She's an old gal and she's had a lot of wear and tear on those toes. She was an active hunter when she was younger. So she's had a lot of injury to those nails. And so I just am very careful with her and I try to match up her toenails to the pads so that it doesn't stick off super far. And I always give lots and lots of love and pets as we're doing this. And she just loves to be snuggled on and getting her belly scratched. And we do treats after everybody has their nails trimmed. That's just how we've always done it. Are you being shy? Well, hello.
This here is Dory. She is a spitfire and she just loves everything about life. Um, she loves to have her nails done. This is spa day for her. I've had her since she was a puppy, so she gets this every, about every six weeks. She gets a nail trim and a foot shave. Uh, I decided not to shave her feet before I trimmed her nails, just so you could see. That's how I maneuver her foot around to avoid pinching her hair. As you can see, I kind of push the hair back a little bit there and I kind of wrap it around the actual toe pad. I try to get that sucker right out of there and I put my thumb there so that as I clip the hair doesn't pop back up and that is a white toenail I don't know if you can see that or not but I pretty much just look at the bottom and I see where that groove is right where that line is oh got some hair there uh, and that's her dew claw right in there I usually say the dew claw I trim a little bit shorter than everything else because there are no rules on that dew claw um, it doesn't follow standard toe nail procedure I guess I would say um, it is generally a little bit shorter the quick is so if you clip it big like you would the toes um, you probably will find blood um, just clip very calmly very easily make sure you love on them a little bit she absolutely loves this we're just gonna spin to win and get her back feet there see she doesn't even care she loves it so Dory is a digger and that's a black nail I don't know if you can see that or not so is that one but Dory is a digger and Dory digs and digs and digs and she loves to play fetch. So her back nails generally are a little bit shorter um, than her front nails. But I still push all the hair back and, oh, see like right there, I almost didn't do it. You can see just how long her nail is and I clip a bunch of it off. And those are all black in the back there. Um, sometimes she breaks them, sometimes she's pretty rough on them. I just keep an eye on it. The last thing any of us want to do is clip the toenail too short. Don't panic if it happens. I just want you to be prepared with your flour or your steptic powder and just be able to put a little bit of pressure on the toe and adding that flour or the powder right there and just giving a little bit of pressure until the bleeding stops. The next common question I get is, can we just dremel the toenails? It is less scary for my pet, which is completely not true. There's more advanced grooming tools out there and a dremel is one of them. They're not less scary for your pet. They can cause burning to the toenail if you're held on for very long and you need to work very quickly in order to keep them from burning your pet. Also, lots of hair gets tangled in them. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem less scary to me. If you have any questions that you need answered and you wonder, do I need to go to the vet or can I solve it myself? That's why I'm here. So please give me a subscribe. Give me a thumbs up down there. And uh, any questions or comments that you have, please leave them below. I would love to help you with your next pet issue. Here's the medical disclaimer. I am not in any way, shape, or form responsible for your pet and your pet's well-being. That is your job because they are your pet, and being they're your pet, they are your property, they are your responsibility. And if you feel that anything educational on this channel has not been correct or you didn't like it, I 100% suggest you go to your vet with your pet. This is not medical advice. This is my take on the world of veterinary medicine. So please do the part that you signed up for and be an advocate for your pet. Thank you so much for watching. I'm here for you. You're here for your pet. See you next time.